MP1 that we have left over from sealing the outside, and we're going to go in and we're going to seal all these seams, uh, seams on the inside. Uh, so as you can see here, there's an example of us doing it right here. We're just kind of running a bead and then smushing the bead in. Uh, and I'm just doing that to make sure that we have a really, really tight and good seal. Um, the important thing is to stop water from seeping in. So we're going to go through every single spot that we can, and that's going to be our final kind of sealant on the inside before we spray foam and uh, frame. This is like a tube of uh, Master Seal NP1. I got it in black. Uh, it comes with different colors. Make sure that it's paintable if you're going to paint it, like for the outside. I'm just going to use a razor blade to cut the tip open, and then um, I'm going to use my gun to uh, puncture it and get it started. And, uh, so I just made a little cut there, and now the tip of it is open. All right, the uh, the gun that I have here is this is a pretty like decent quality gun. I would recommend not going cheap on one of these guns. They got them for like three bucks, but those suck, um, and they're not usually for this type of application. They're more for like. Uh, silicone or stuff that you might use in a bathroom, like a caulking, stuff like that. But for something heavy duty, you want to get a pretty quality, something like a really pump, because this is thick stuff. So basically what it is, it comes out like a goo, and then it hardens into rubber. So it comes out soft and then hardens into rubber. So definitely make sure that you're fully geared up, covered, gloves, because this shit will make a, make a mess. I'm going to use my knife here to kind of pull this little piece out. This is a part of the tool that actually allows me to uh, puncture. I'm just going to clean it here, it's going to be really gross. I'm just using my razor blade to cut it down. This is up to you if you want to do this or not. Alright, so then the idea is you take that and you put it inside. And you want it to... Create as many punctures as you can. I'm going to rotate it and do it again. Inside of that is like a little al aluminum foil type seal. Yeah. So that's what it looks like inside. That's what I'm trying to achieve is the uh, opening of the sealant or the, the little seal. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna seat it like this over top of the thing that pushes it and we're gonna tuck it under that and we're gonna snap it into place. This is, make sure the orientation of the teeth is downward, at least on my device, which is gonna, as I squeeze it, it's gonna ratchet forward. What that's doing is just pushing the tube forward. Y'all transparent it? Can you see the NV1 coming forward? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, cool. I'm going to squeeze, and as I squeeze, it's going to come out, and then I'm going to put it in the corner. And once the bead starts, I'm just going to start moving. Now, if I was to do exterior sealant, I could just leave it like this. You know, when you're trying to do a, what they call a fat bead or whatever, what you're trying to do is just create one solid stream like this, with continuous pressure. You don't want as many lumps as I'm getting right now. As smooth as possible and you're gonna go down and down and down. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go back in with my finger. This is a no-no, most people will get mad at you for this, but in this particular application, I wanna do this because I want this to be super sealed, so I wanna make sure that I get it inside any gaps. And because I'm gonna cover all this up, I don't care what it looks like. If this was an exposed surface, you would not wanna do what I'm doing right now because people would see this, and they would see that it looks all gummy or whatever. And then, you know, this is eventually gonna get coated with uh, spray foam. This is my little cartoon character that I drew to keep me company when I was working in Texas. I'm running the bead again. You see how I'm consistently holding pressure and moving, 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 moving as fast as I can. So now because of gravity, it sagged down a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and do this anyway, so that doesn't matter. And that's really getting it up in there. So there's still a couple spots here that are kind of gapped. I'm gonna add a little bit more, add a little bit more, and then again. So right now we're, we're doing the whole bus with this. The whole interior, the, all the interior seams where we alter the bus. So basically this whole brown area, mm -hmm. where, wherever there was a um, hat channel added, where it was lifted up. So I'm not gonna go up in here and do it, because that's not necessary. You can already see that it has some rubberized sealant in there. Mm -hmm. um, but every place where I made modifications, including up here in the front, these wires are coming out, there's a gap. So rain could potentially get in that. I'm gonna seal that. Here's where the back of one of the rivets didn't come through, I'm gonna seal that. There's a little crack in the far back where light is peering through. Mm. This is where we cut through the hat channel. So that oh, little gap yeah. right there, water can come in there. Right here where I removed the, uh, the rain gutter mounts, there's little gaps right there. So all that stuff's gotta get sealed up. But yeah, so that's today's project, is try to get as much NP1 in here as possible. Yep. And um, yeah, we'll show you what it looks I'm like. I'm helping, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll show you what it looks like when we're done. Okay, thanks.
the next step in uh, sealing up everything was to clean the floor. First I gave it a good sweep and vacuum and then I uh, went ahead and gave it a wash as well. And uh, once I got it nice and soaped up and clean, then we just rinsed it out with a uh, garden hose. We've done this way more times than I care to admit. Um, uh, so make sure that you plan accordingly so you don't have to keep cleaning your floor like we did. So our next step is that we're gonna plug up all of the holes that are on the floor. Um, that's a little metal blanks. I'm gonna use some Loctite premium eight times construction adhesive that is uh, designed for metal. And you don't have to worry about it not being flush because we are actually gonna frame the floor out for insulation. So everything's gonna be way down underneath the insulation anyway. We'll get that started. Got my knee pads on. Make it nice and easy. Okay, so I'm using the um, scrap sheet metal to go ahead and make extra blanks. See here, I just have a regular pair of uh, sheet metal uh, snips and I've gone through and I'm just making equidistance cuts and then I'm gonna cut them this way and then I'll have a bunch of these little blanks and then I can just glue those with the um, adhesive directly over the hole. This I know is the same material, so I would prefer to do it this way other than like um, coins or something. Uh, this is the sheet metal that actually used to be in the roof, or in the ceilings. Once all the floor was sealed up, we went ahead and gave it a nice coat of rusty Rust-Oleum primer. And I also used the Rust-Oleum primer on the roof hatches here that I filled in, in preparation to coat the entire roof with elastomeric paint. In order to prepare the roof for painting, I had to give it a wash. I used this mold armor stuff, which is like a degreaser and demolding agent. It smelled pretty bad, but it uh, did an amazing job cleaning the roof off of debris.